Hey everybody, welcome to Collins Creatures. Today I'm at the Bronx Zoo, even though there's no big sign that says Bronx Zoo at the entrance that I came into. And I'm gonna check out the zoo and see all the animals because I've never been to this zoo. Keep in mind we were filming this video in December and while it was a nice day today, some of the animals that could not tolerate the cold were not on display. But the bison can tolerate some of the worst winters. So now let's go into the world of birds. This enclosure was very naturalistic and complex with lots of bird activity and it was a good reflection of the kinds of exhibits they have at the zoo. What was cool about the world of birds is that not just birds were inside of the enclosures. This is an African grey parrot and they are very common pet birds. This is a lesser bird of paradise, not quite as ornate as the greater bird of paradise. And this is the female of the same bird. These birds are called bee eaters and they do eat bees and sometimes the zoo will feed them bees. Obviously, the sea lions are also winter hardy and can be kept outside all year round and were very active, vocal, and very entertaining. The peacocks actually roam freely around the park. They also had a variety of colorful pheasants. Everyone knows the best animals are from Madagascar. Madagascar is known for their many lemur species. This one is a red ruffed lemur and they are very endangered. This is a ring-tailed lemur, and King Julian from the movie Madagascar is a ring-tailed lemur. These are Safaka lemurs, like the TV lemur Zabumafu. This is a Fusa and is the largest land predator in Madagascar. But the Nile crocodile takes the throne of the largest predator in Madagascar and is the king of the waterways. Well that's family friendly.
If you didn't already have it, after this exhibit, you might develop catseridophobia, or the irrational fear of cockroaches. Reptiles, my ballywick. They have a reptile nursery inside the reptile building with a bunch of baby reptiles. This one is a baby rattlesnake. Take a close look. This is a black rat snake with a copper head snuggled up next to it. I can't believe the sidewinder is in the tree. Of course they have the three largest snakes in the world, the reticulated python, which is the longest, the green anaconda, which is the heaviest, and the Burmese python, which is invasive to the Everglades. These are some baby radiated tortoises in the reptile nursery. While this looks like a sea turtle, it is actually a freshwater turtle called a fly river turtle. If you think this turtle has a long neck, Check out the neck on this turtle, and this is called a African snake neck turtle. These are Kihansi spray toads. They were once found in Tanzania, but they now they're extinct in the wild and can only be found in zoos like the Bronx Zoo. And they're very small and are yellow in color. They had a fair number of crocodilians, which all needed big enclosures in the reptile house. Most people know about the American alligator, but not many know about the endangered Chinese alligator. Which are also smaller. It may be surprising to see this African dwarf crocodile perched as it is, but actually, at a smaller size, some crocodilians can actually climb. This is an electric blue day gecko, and this is the first time I've ever seen one in person. This is a horned lizard or horny toad and they are from the desert of the American Southwest and they have a cool defense mechanism of squirting blood out of their eyes. 
and they have a very specialized diet of ants. And behind him are two Gila monsters. This is an immature Komodo dragon. These really cool looking lizards, called shingleback skinks, are natives to Australia, but are not commonly seen in the United States. Of all the African animals that we saw, the rhinos and the Thompson's gazelle were the only two that were outside. In addition to the world of birds, they have a second bird house called the aquatic bird house where they keep birds that live in or near water, like these scarlet ibis, not flamingos, but they get their color the same way as flamingos, which is through their food. The black bird in the middle is also a scarlet ibis, but it did not get its pink plumage yet. Those are little blue penguins. Little blue penguins are the smallest penguin in the world and have a bluish color to their feathers. And they're from Australia and New Zealand and are endangered, sadly. But they are incredibly cute. Puffins are always a fan favorite because they're always active and they're also fun to say. Puffin! This solitary bird is a Guam kingfisher, which is endemic to Guam, and kingfishers dive into the water to catch fish. This is the Arctic bird aviary, and it makes you feel like you're outside. Just be warned, you may get pooped on, like I was. It's actually called the Seabird Aviary, and it makes it feel like you're outside because you are outside. It is a giant structure covered in netting that allows the birds to fly. The birds you see that are flying are Inca Terns and Grey Gulls, but there are also Magellanic Penguins and a Swan. The white stuff that you see all over the exhibit is bird poop or guano, and these are the birds that pooped on me. And the birds that pooped on me are called Inca Terns, and they are known for their white mustaches. The chatter that you hear in this clip, you can hear all throughout the exhibit. And here's the swan. The symbol of and national bird of America, the bald eagle, which has a scientific name Haliatus leucocephalus, and leucocephalus literally means white headed.
we got here fairly late and didn't get to see most of the zoo either because it was cold so most of the animals some of the animals were inside or that the buildings closed quite early but what we did see was very nice and the only animal left on display is this squirrel so thanks for watching subscribe to my channel like my videos and i'll see some on collins creatures